Shandy Hall is in a village in North Yorkshire. It's not a new visitor attraction. It's always been somewhere that people have journeyed to as a literary shrine. And the fact that it was the place where Lawrence Stern wrote the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy, gentleman, rather than he was born or died, gives it a particular significance. This is the place where the work was created, so therefore perhaps it's got a different feel to it than it would have if it was just an accident of birth or death. Shandy was a North Yorkshire dialect word, meaning odd, slightly odd or crack-brained. And Shandy Hall, the odd crack-brained hall that was constructed for its inhabitants, was an invention of Stern's. And this house then became a reality from the fiction that had created it. It has not been left. Stern didn't write the book, put the final full stop. Well, actually, he didn't put the end. He put the end of the ninth volume. And then leave and lock the door and disappear. Many of the objects and artefacts that are in it are associated with Stern but they're from a later date. So they don't make any contribution towards the idea of making it seem as if Stern has just walked out of it. And I don't wish that to be underlined or confirmed. It's a house which is constantly in a state of flux. When visitors come to Shandy Hall, I don't want them to have to go through an organised experience in a museum, which has a route through it. The way that you can experience a particular house, or a literary house in particular, is open to a wide number of interpretations, and I don't want that to be fixed. It's quite rewarding to sort of have a poke and an explore and a, a general investigation into what there is to be found. Because if you go anywhere, if you clean your ears out and you clean your eyes out and you're prepared to accept and investigate what there is to be found, then that can only be rewarding.